You are listening to Western Iowa's information leader, KCIM. I'm Nathan Cones, here with your midday news for Thursday, January 25th, 2024. A Sherdan woman was killed yesterday afternoon after crashing during a high-speed pursuit in Woodbury County. According to the Iowa State Patrol, 40-year-old Melissa Thede of Sherdan refused to yield to law enforcement when they attempted to conduct a routine traffic stop at approximately 4.30 p.m. on a 2001 Chrysler PT Cruiser for speeding within the Sioux City limits. Authorities terminated the pursuit due to the high rate of speed and the erratic manner in which Thede was driving. Police say she continued to flee until she collided with the rear end of a 2012 Dodge Ram 1500 operated by 29-year-old Hector Alvarez Colazo of Sioux City. The Thede vehicle then rolled and collided with a 2018 Ford Edge driven by 36-year-old Tracy Kellen of Sioux City. Thede was transported to Mercy One Hospital by Sioux City Fire and EMS but died due to the injury sustained in the crash. Colazo sustained minor injuries. Kellen was unhurt in that crash. A group of Carroll residents, referring to themselves as all cultures are equal, says they are actively working to make Carroll a more welcoming place to people of different ethnic and cultural backgrounds. The group started meeting informally nearly two years ago to assist Ukrainians displaced by the Russian invasion of their home country. Jim Friel, who sits on the group's 13-member steering committee, says they broadened their target demographic as they met further. The thought process was that's when the war was starting to take place. Is this something that we should be proactive with or be prepared in case refugees start coming into the state of Iowa? From there, there was some interest on what we can do for a refugee program. A second meeting took place about two months after that. As we're at the meeting, individuals start bringing up, well, why are we looking at just Ukrainian refugees? This is something that we should be looking at for all refugees or immigrants coming into the state or even into our community. It was informal from April of 2022 to current. It was a group of individuals that would only meet maybe three times a year and just talk about what is the right approach, not only for individuals coming to our community, but also for our community. It became apparent Carol was ill-equipped to handle refugees due to language barriers, difference in faith backgrounds, and more. Instead, the group shifted its focus to finding ways to support newcomers to Carol who don't fit the traditional mold. If you go back to look at Carol maybe in the 50s and 60s compared to where Carol is today, we are progressing. And we just want to make sure we stay proactive on making all feel welcome in our community. And if there's things that we can do to assist, we definitely want to look at that. We want to promote right now to ensure that we can retain and also recruit additional folks to help in our community. Friel says recruit does not mean relocating busloads of immigrants and dropping them off in Carroll. He says companies like Pella transport workers to their facility here in town from an hour plus away to work, and they return home to spend the wages they earn here in other places. If you drive down Highway 30 here in Carroll, how many openings do we have for positions? How are we going to go ahead and fill those positions? And then you hear from Iowa Economic Development that of working age, only 64 to 68 percent of the workforce is working. Where is the disconnect in those figures there? And why do we have so many more openings? So in order for us to go ahead and continue maybe growing Carroll or maintaining a certain level of growth in Carroll, we're going to need additional workforce, uh, whether it is through an H-2A program for farmers or whether it is individuals coming into our community, regardless of their nationality or ethnic background. It's just saying, hey, we want all good people that want to be in our community here. Friel says this effort is still in its very early stages and they have many problems to solve. The housing stock is already tight for current residents, and that is just a starting point. Friel says they are looking to get the ball rolling to see what is possible. It's such a broad topic. We're trying to figure out what we need for our community. That's why we're forming a steering committee. What do we need, if anything, for our community? How do we assist our employers? How do we assist our schools? How do we help individuals that maybe want to move to Carroll network with people such as the churches and the schools where they can feel comfortable. I use the word safe, but I feel like they're part of the community. Friel stresses they are still just getting started and don't even have a firm goal set as of yet. 
He says they haven't started developing housing plans or workforce integration guidelines. Friel says they want to have the community involved and to be a transparent. And we have more people that just want to be involved, want to get the facts, want to get the knowledge. But if they want to be involved, just to have them reach out to me and they can email me. They can contact me. All are welcome. His contact points are included with this story online. And according to the latest report from the Iowa Department of Agriculture in AAA Iowa, fuel prices mainly held steady over the past week. As of Wednesday, the price of regular unleaded gasoline averaged two seventy-five per gallon across the state, two cents higher than last week and fifty-one cents below prices from a year ago. The national average climbed one cent to three ten per gallon. Retail diesel prices in Iowa were unchanged from three fifty-nine per gallon. This time last year, diesel averaged four twenty-four per gallon. Iowa prices remain 33 cents below the current national average of 392 per gallon. Wholesale ethanol held steady at $2.16. In heating fuels, propane prices were up one cent to $1.57 per gallon. Home heating oil jumped 18 cents to 301 per gallon. And natural gas prices at the Henry Hub reporting site slid 18 cents to $2.65 per MMBTU. And we do need to step away here for just a moment. We'll be right back. More news is on the way after this on KCIM. Lofi's Holiday Sweepstakes is back. The Bakers of Country Hearts would like to put a little more jingle in your holiday this season by giving you a chance to win one of two $500 prizes or the grand prize of $1,000. Winners will each receive a check that can be used for travel, gifts, or just celebrating with family and friends. Whatever makes your holiday more jolly. For complete rules and to enter for your chance to win, visit facebook.com slash bread. If you have money sitting in a regular savings or checking account, I can show you how you could be getting higher interest. Hi, this is Chris Dirks, personal banker with Iowa Savings Bank. At ISB, we have incredible CD rates that are fixed. Contact me, Chris Dirks, at Iowa Savings Bank to find out what CD specials we have to offer you and start earning money on your deposit today. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Account conditions and qualifications apply. All loans are subject to ISB loan policies and regulatory requirements. Welcome back to KCIM's Midday News. I'm Nathan Cones reporting. A Carroll woman was taken into custody Tuesday after stealing allegedly a combination of cigarettes, cash, and lottery tickets from her place of employment. The Carroll Police Department responded to a call from the Hy-Vee Grocery Store in Carroll where 46-year-old Stacy Rieselman was arrested and charged with second-degree theft, a Class D felony. Video surveillance recorded Rieselman stealing from Hy-Vee over several weeks, taking more than $1,500 worth of merchandise, but court records were unable to provide an exact dollar amount. Rieselman was released on a $5,000 bond and will appear in court on February 1st. A Class D felony in Iowa carries a maximum penalty of up to five years in prison and $7,500 in fines. On Tuesday afternoon, Iowa District 4 Representative Randy Feinstra visited Loring Hospital in Sac City to tour the facility and speak with staff on his efforts to protect Medicare and to build up a strong health care workforce in rural communities. Feinstra met with hospital CEO Matt Johnson, who showed the representative plans for the addition to the facility, which will expand health care opportunities for the Sac City and surrounding communities. While touring the building, Feinstra shook the hands of many staff members, thanking them for everything they do, and assuring them that he is fighting for rural hospitals at the federal level. My whole focus is trying to figure out what we can do to make sure that our rural hospitals are sustainable, and, and that we can also hire, whether it be family physicians, doctors, nurses, even CNAs, you name it, it goes all the way up the chain, to make sure that we are successful in providing great health care. Feinster sat down with staff after the tour to address any questions or concerns they might have. One topic that was brought up was about Centers for Medicare and Medicaid undercutting hospitals from the 2% of the cost they are supposed to receive per the contract with the federal government. Feinster says he's well aware of the situation and that CMS is looking through the lens at bigger, more urban hospitals who can take the Medicare and Medicaid cuts without needing to halt operations. And that's why we're trying to have a, a hearing here in Iowa. I'm trying to get on rural hospitals that I can show CMS, I can show the federal government, this is what this is what's happening in, in rural America. And if you don't understand this, you're going to have a real, real problems as, as hospitals continue to close. Feinster says another issue that rural hospitals face are staffing shortages, as the doctors and staff are the backbone that keep everything running. And Feinster wants to encourage professionals to stay in the rural communities.
My feeling is that we have to incentivize nursing and, and other areas. And how do we incentivize, you know, how can we keep them in Iowa? How can we keep them here in rural America? And I think there's got to be incentive to say, all right, if you're going to a rural hospital, is that there's some incentive to pay those loans off if you, if you, if you stay there for five years. And, and it's, a, it's a declining marker as you go. And same thing for nursing. Or you incentivize saying you don't have to pay tax or you pay less tax uh, if you work in, in one of these locations for five to seven years. Photos from Representative Feenstra's visit to Loring Hospital are included with this story on our website. And in response to the continued high demand for petroleum products in the Midwest, Governor Kim Reynolds has extended a proclamation that eases regulations regarding fuel transport. The declaration aims to address the challenges faced by citizens in accessing various fuel products, particularly heating fuels necessary for residential heating, especially in rural areas. The governor's declaration includes temporarily suspending certain hours of service regulations for crews and drivers delivering gasoline, diesel fuel, kerosene, ethanol, biodiesel, and residential fuels, such as propane and natural gas. The original order, which was put into effect on January 10th, now expires February 8th, unless extended or terminated earlier. The proclamation is in its entirety can be found included with this story on our website. And that is going to be wrapping up your news here on KCIM. For these stories and many more, check us out online by following us on Facebook and X on the web at 1380kcim.com or through our Carol Broadcasting mobile app. I'm Nathan Cones reporting.